All right, Scope TV. Happy TGIF to all the Scope listeners out there. This is a big night for us. We got one of the biggest, right now, the man who's making the hottest videos for you name it, Enrique Iglesias, Lil Wayne, Birdman, Pitbull. I could keep going, but let me let my man come on. Dave Rousseau, what's happening, brother? What's going on, man? Thanks for having me on. My pleasure, man. So, why don't we break it down? Let's get right into this, because the people want to hear from you. This is this is really a, a, a unique and awesome interview we got here. So, where are we talking from tonight, and what's up for the weekend? We are talking from uh, unusually cold Miami. Um, this is our Basel weekend, so really it's all about um, all different parties and events that are going on down here in, uh, in Miami for our Basel. Nice. Now, at what age did you start really messing with the camera and, you know, kind of kind of experimenting with film? Man, I was, uh, I was like eight or nine years old, and I would, uh, I would go into my old man's closet and, and, and take his uh, little uh, Super 8 millimeter camera and just go out with my friends and shoot little movies and little mini music videos. And, you know, we'd watch, like, MTV and try to mimic, you know, like all, all the stuff. On TV and stuff, so that was kind of like the first, um, you know, experimentation into creativity and you know, try to impress all the girls and go out there and, and shoot. Um, so that would have to be it. That was like the first time you know, picked up a camera and, and just started to, to shoot. That's cool. Now, how do your parents feel now that you're having such success in music and music videos and just film in general and not uh, going the way they wanted, which was to study medicine or law? Um, you know, at the beginning, I think they always felt like, yo, you need something to, to, to fall back on. And, and you know, um, honestly, like, you know, I don't really have anything to fall back on. So, uh, you know, the minute I, you know, I started getting some work, I, you know, I think they were just a relief. You know what I'm saying? Like, they were like, oh, great, he's not moving back in. Um, so, you know, it was, uh, it was just, nothing comes that easy. But, um, you know, I think, uh, I think my, my family's proud of me and, uh, and everything I've done. And, you know, they know I've worked really hard for it and, um. You know, sacrifice a lot. I mean, you know, um, it's not all you know the fun and, and the glamour and the lights and the artists. I mean, there's a lot of hard work and you know a lot of long nights and you're away from your family, you're traveling and. Um, but you know, at the end, it's all worthwhile. But it's definitely a lot harder than people think it is. Now, you really touch on a good point, and that goes right into my next question. Explain briefly, Dave, how you got your big break and like when you began working with you know with big names like. You know, when did you get that first call from Lil Wayne or Enrique Iglesias? You know what I'm saying? Go from, like, obscurity to, like, I'd say the big time. Um, you know, it's, it's funny because I think I think people always assume it's one video that does it for you, but but in this business, it's, it's a body of work. I mean, if anybody can have one video that, you know, people watch on YouTube or, or on MTV, but it, it really isn't until you have you know, two, three, four videos, you know, you work with Pitbull, you work with Nori, Fat Joe, Wayne, and all of a sudden it becomes like, you know, people know your name and they know your work, but um, I was, the first video that, that, you know, I guess was our most successful was, um, we did a video for Pitbull for the song I Know You Want Me, um, Guy Ocho, which is like, you know, up to like 150 million views on Huge. YouTube or something Huge. like that, some disgusting amount of views, and, and that was like that first video that people all over the world started calling and asking for, you know, for us to, for me to do something for them, whether it was a commercial or whether it was for, you know, another video. I was getting, we were getting calls from Turkey, from South Africa. I mean, it was insane, and that was the first time where really it was like, you know, worldwide, people, people knew the work, and they knew, um, they knew who did it, and so they were asking for it. But yeah, you know, like, again, going back to the question, it isn't just one thing, it's is really working with a lot of people and, and people knowing your work and trusting your work. Cool. Now, what was the first video of yours that you were sitting down on your couch and then you saw it come on TV? Oh, um, the first one, I, I dude, dude I, I, this is a funny story too. Um, I was actually, man, I had like a terrible stomach bug, and um, you know, I, know, I remember I was upstairs and. And, uh, and my girl just started, you know, they're playing your video. It was, uh, it was Secret of Meyer. It was this video that I did in 2007 with, uh, with Pitbull and Lloyd. And, uh, man, I literally was on the toilet just, you know, throwing up. And she's like, your video's on, your video's on. And I, I literally like, ran down the stairs, you know, just to watch it. And that was, like, the first time that, 
you know, that, that it was on TV, and, you know, but, and I was sick. I, you know, I don't think I even, you know, knew what was going on at the time, but that was probably the, the first time that, like, you know, I saw something on TV. That's dope. Now, what are some of the, some challenges of dealing with these big name artists, i.e., their egos, and how much input do you take from them? Um, you know, as far as egos, you'd be surprised. You know, um, I, you know, the, you know, it's usually not as bad as you think. Because you know, I think the media and, and you know, just you know, bloggers and and whatnot, and people just make these artists to, to be something that not. I mean, I think most of the time they're just regular people. You know, they want to get in, they want to do the job, and they want to get out, just like anybody else. If you got an appointment, you know, you want you know, you want to be seen, you want to do your work, and you want to leave. And as long as you're prepared and you know what you're doing, you know, and, and you tell the artist, this is your call time, this is when you expect to leave, and, and you know, you got everything ready for them, then you're not really going to experience those, like, big ego things. You know, like, Enrique Iglesias, for example, like, the only thing that dude asked all day was for bottled water. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you would think this dude is going to ask for, like, champagne and this and that, and, you know, he didn't. You know what I'm saying? And it just goes back to, you know, if they're, if they're there to do work, then you'd be surprised. They're just going to go in there and do the job and get out. And um, luckily for us, you know, we're always prepared for them, you know, whether it be Wayne or Pitt. You know, Wayne is the dude who, you know, you don't call, call him out of his trailer until you're ready to shoot. So, you know, PT knows when we're calling him is because he's ready to shoot. And we literally turn on the camera, press record, and he walks straight out of his trailer, straight onto the set and starts performing. There's no, you know, no 15 minutes of talking. No, it's just straight to the set. And he loves that. You know, he loves the fact that when he works with us, he's shooting and he's, he can leave as soon as he's done. So for us, you know, for me personally, like, I honestly, Eagles, i um, never really experienced a situation where um, some of these Eagles got out of hand. That's dope. Now, this is kind of an open-ended question, but we, I, I kind of just want to give the Scope listeners, like, just like a, a brief... Like, how it all goes down, you know? Like, so let's say I had a real hot single, and you agreed to make the video. Like, what's the the process, briefly, that takes place from there, between the song and then you creating the concept for the video, and you know what I'm saying? I mean, usually, you know, it can happen a couple of different ways. I mean, I can come up with a concept by myself, you know, or, or I can work with the artist. You know, try to come up with something together, and and that usually works best because that means you know the artist is involved, and it's and they feel you know like they're part of the creative process as opposed to just yo this is what we're gonna do show up at this time wear this and do this you know if they're involved from from the get then you know more often than not they're gonna be more involved in the shoot they're gonna be you know more into it so um, after the concept really it's just where we're we gonna shoot when we're we gonna shoot. You, know, you do some location scouting. You, you know, you try to find lo- locations that people haven't shot before. You know, you try to do things that are a little bit that are original. I mean, that's the whole that's the whole idea. Um, after you choose the location and stuff and whatnot, then you know you start casting. You know, whether it be for for the girls, for the leads, for extras, and that's usually a lot of fun because you gotta have beautiful girls in the videos. And <laughs> all the artists that we work with, you know, they have their type. And since we've been working with them for a while, we know who's type. You know, I, I can see girls on the street and say, that girl, they would love that girl to be one of his videos. Or, you know, you know, X, Y, Z, Enrique would love this type of girl. So, you know, we're always constantly looking for the girls to be in the videos and casting and getting pictures. So casting would be next. And then really it's pre-production, which is just getting everything ready, you know, getting all the equipment, getting all the, all the manpower, and then just doing our schedule and then shooting. And once you shoot, you know, I mean, Shoots can be anywhere from 12, 16, 20, 22 hours long. It's a long process, you know, and um, usually after a shoot, you know, you're exhausted, the town's exhausted, but, you know, that's 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 the work. And then after that, it's like two weeks of, of editing and putting everything together, doing the post-production. So all in all, like from beginning to end, from the moment, you know, that, that, that song hits your email, from the moment you start writing your concept, you know, it could be a, a month, you know what I'm saying, by the time the video is actually out. So... That's why, you know, it's important that you give you all because literally, you know, it's a month out of your life. Um, and, and that's why it's important to, you know, work with the artist to make sure that um, they're happy with the concept and with the, with the end result as well. That's dope. Well, we're going to take our first break here. This is really incredible. Scope TV on a Friday night. Happy Hanukkah to all the uh, Jewish Scope listeners out there. Mm-hmm. We're going to be right back. <laughs> 